Welcome participants. In this particular lecture also we will be continuing the knitting notation for complicated fabric structure. Last lecture you have seen how we can go for box, point and bar diagram for simple fabric structure. But in this particular lecture I am going to show you more complicated structure where the yarn movement is highly complicated and how if you follow the yarn path you can represent those fabric structure with these type of notations. So, let us see what we are going to cover especially today. We are going to cover very different knitted structures which looks even more complicated. So, some of these examples are like this. So, we are going to cover these type of fabric structures where you can see the yarn path are highly complicated. So, some of these structures we are going to learn how we can note these type of structures. So, let us start with the simplest one, this particular structure. So, if you see these two particular structure, you can easily find there are loop, tuck and float. So, how we are going to represent these structures when multiple number of needles are involved in tuck and float formations. So, in the last lecture you have seen two examples where there was just one float that was created by needle. In some fabric structure the number of needles which might be making floats uh, may be more than 1, 2, 3. For example, here in this fabric structure four floats are being made by four needles. Uh, now, we are going to understand how, what are those four needles which are making float and how they are making. So, let us start with this. So, the approach remains similar we need to first see how many courses you can identify and how many yarn movements you can follow. So, if you see this particular course, the white one, if you see this one, the white one, in this particular course all are making loops. Okay. So, this is our first course because you can follow the path of the yarn. Okay. Now, let us see the second course. So, second course is this black one. Okay. So, this is the black yarn which is shown. So, if you follow the path, it moves like this. It first make loop, then float, then again loop. So, two courses uh, you can easily see. If you follow the third course, uh, we are not sure what uh, it is making. So, I am skipping this particular third course. Uh, Let us focus uh, to note down these two courses. So, um, again for the point notations, uh, we have to first make sure whether this fabric is a single jersey fabric or double jersey fabrics. So, if you see the uh, movement of needles in a particular course, so if you see this particular needle, it is making on the technical back side. This particular bigger loop also it is making on the technical back side. This also technical back side. So, all needles are actually participating in the loop formation on the technical back sides. So, naturally this fabric is a single jersey fabric and it has been created by single bed. So, we just need one row of uh, needle and how many columns you can count. So, this is first column, second column, third column, fourth column, fifth column, sixth column. So, six needles has been participated. So, you can take six needles 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Okay. This is your for first course. So, first course six needle has been participated. In the second course also all those six needles has been participated. So, for the second course we are again showing six needle. So, this is for second course. Okay. Now, let us uh, start giving the notation. So, if you see the first course, it is technical back side. This bigger held loop is also technical back side. This is also technical back side. These all are technical back side. So, how do we represent technical back side? Something like this. So, if you see the loop, technical back side we represent like this. So, we can simply make 
all technical back loops in the first course okay and these two technical back loops are connected so we we have joined the same yarn and this part is actually nothing but the sinker which is connecting two loops along the course now go to the second one which is most interesting one so if you see the first loop it is technical back loop no doubt so you have represented this is technical back loop the black one but if you go in the second column in this column this particular yarn is having no intermeshing points so all four intermeshing points at foot position and head position for this particular position of the loop is missing so that's why this yarn is in a straight configuration so this is nothing but a float and how do we represent float on the technical back side of the fabric so if you see the float on the technical back side we give a straight bar below the needle point so we can show like this okay if you see the third needle again all are making float so 1 2 3 and 4 so these all four needles are making float and since these floats are connected with each other so you can simply connect all the lines so these are four floats now come to the last loop of sixth column in the second course you see this particular loop this is technical back side so you can simply make technical back side and you can connect with the yeah so this is how you can represent this particular fabric with point notation okay now if you go for box notation uh, once any one of the notation is okay then you can simply follow the other notations so in box notation since it has two courses so you need two rows and you need six columns 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 so 1 and 2 these are the two courses and these are the six columns in the first course you have all technical back loops so all 0 0 0 0 and 0 so all technical back loops in the second course you have technical back loop in the first column then all float so how do we represent float in technical back side so in technical back side we represent float by a blank box so we keep all these four boxes blank because they are representing floats and float means no intermeshing points so that's why it remains blank and then in the sixth column you are again making loop so this is the box notation okay now if you go for bar notation you can simply have the bar notations in the similar fashions so you first need six needles for two courses so this is first course this is second course and how do we represent back loop in the bar position something like this so we represent all six technical back loop in bar notation so this is your bar notation if you go for second course again the first one is technical back so you can see technical back technical back and how do we represent in the bar notations the technical back is represented by a straight line which is placed below the needle so this is the needle and you place simple straight line so you can simply put a straight line so you can simply put like this and then again loop because you have the technical back loop in the last column so this is how you represent point box and bar diagrams so here you can see there are four needles consecutively they are making float okay so this diagram is some little bit different now let's move to the next one which is uh, similar to float where multiple needles are making many floats so let's see this particular fabric so if you see this fabric 
which we just completed, if you see this fabric and this fabric, um, ideally they are different in many sense. So, if you see the straight segment, it is on the leg side, but here if you see the straight segment, it is towards the head side of the bottom loops. Okay? So, if you see this one straight segment of, uh, of the below course, but if you see here the straight segment is towards the head of the below loops. So, naturally it means at these points the needles are holding two loops. So, if you remember in tuck, so in tuck clearing does not happen, so old loop does not clear and it catches the yarn. So, these four needles at these locations actually catches the yarn. So, that is why these all four needles are making tuck, which is different from this one. Okay? So, how do we represent this particular fabric? So, first you count number of courses. So, this is the first course where you can follow the path, the gray yarn, if you see this. So, this is the first course, then the black one, this is the black one which is little bit complicated and then this third course which is also visible. So, this is your third course. Okay? So, you have third course and how many columns you can count? So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6, 6 columns. So, naturally you need 6 needles and 3 courses for so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is for first course, then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Second course, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Third course. Why we are using one set of needles? If you carefully see all the loops, so this is also technical backside. The second needle is also making technical backside, third needle is also making technical backside. So, all loops, all needles in this particular fabric, they are towards the backside. So, that is why it is made by single bed machine. So, this is also a single jersey fabric. And you have three courses which is visible here and it is made by six needles. Okay. So, let us start filling the loops and stitches as per the diagram. So, if you follow the first course, all are technical backside. So, that is why you can simply put technical backside. So, these are the six loops in technical backside in the first course. Now, if you follow the second course, first one is technical back and the last one is technical back. But if you see the four needles, these four needles are catching the yarn at the head position of the below loops. So, this is only possible when it is having tuck and you can see this is the tuck is having two intermeshing points missing, but unfortunately the second conjugative needles next to the second needle, the third needle is also making tuck because of that it this particular tuck loop is losing three intermeshing points. Okay? There is only one intermeshing here at the head position. If you see the tuck here, since for this particular needle, the left needle and right needle are also making tuck, because of that they would not be able to create any intermeshing point. So, it looks like float, but since the yarn segment is present on the head part of the old loop, it means ideally on the machines, this needle has catch the yarn before clearing the old loop. So, naturally this is the process of tuck. So, we have to represent this as a tuck. Again, if you go for the third, this yarn is cached with the old loop. So, that is why this is also tuck and the fourth one is also tuck. So, how do we represent tuck? So, for representing tuck, if you remember technical backside, the tuck is represented by like this. So, we can represent like this and we can simply connect these 
loops, all tuck loops are connected. So, if you carefully see all the yarns are on the technical back side of this particular needles. So, these tucks all the yarns on are on the same side. So, naturally when the fabric will relax these all tucks will become straight. So, in some of the books you might have seen these might have represented by something like this. straight segments because if you see this one in the relaxed condition the fabric uh, will shrink and eventually these segment of yarn will become straight. So, all segments will become straight and these all segments are towards the same side of the needles. So, that is why they become straight. This is again the tuck position. So, if you carefully see so the yarn is going from one side and then it is moving towards the other side of the needle. So, here also from one side it is moving towards the other side of the needle and consecutively it is making four tuck and then it is going back on the other side to make technical back loop. So, either you represent the second course this way or this way it remains similar. Now, go to the third one, third one is again very similar technical back all are technical back. So, you can simply make like this. Okay. So, this is your point notation. Now, let us go for the box notation. Box is even very simple. So, if you can simply make box where you have 3 courses and you have 6 columns 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. In the first course you have all technical back. So, you can put 0, 0, 0, 0 and 0. Second row you have 0 then 4 tuck and how do we represent tuck in technical back by dot. So, if you see tuck on technical back side is represented by dot in a box. So, 4 dots representing 4 tucks. So, these are 4 tucks represented by 4 dots then 0 and then on the third course all are technical back. So, you can simply put 6 0. So, this is your box diagram. And now, if you go for point diagram, again you need 6 bars for 3 courses. First, second and third. In the first course, it is making technical back. So, this is how technical back is represented. So, this is how you make 6 technical back in the first course. Now, if you go for the second one, the first and second are making technical back and then the four needles in the second course are making tuck. So, how do we represent tuck? Something like this. Okay. And uh, after that in the third course, again it is making six technical so, this is bar notation. Second course again if you see 4 tucks are in a consecutive sequence. So, naturally the yarn in reality will not be always in zigzag form. It will remain in a straight form. So, you can represent these second course by straight segments as well. So, you can represent like this something like this. So, either you say represent the second course like this or like this they all are uh, similar indications. So, this is how you can see although it has straight segments uh, here and here also, but this indicates the float this indicates the tuck as per the engagement of needles on the machines otherwise these two fabrics will never be the same uh, it will always be different because the nature of the formation of these fabrics on the machine. So, you have to be extremely careful and understand the actual sequence how they are being formed on the machines and because of that. So, if you understand the machine part then only you will be able to clearly express the notation in a right way. So, we have done with this now let us go for double jersey fabrics because we so far we have only completed with single jersey now let us go for the double jersey the simple one. 
how do we identify whether a particular fabric is a double jersey or single jersey by this particular diagram? So, to make a double jersey fabric, we have already defined that it needs two beds. So, whenever we are operating uh, the fabric with two beds, so some loops will be technical front and some loops will be technical back. So, you have to see on this fabric whether you can see any technical back or front loops simultaneously on the same surface. So, if you see this particular loop, it is technical back and the next loop is on the front side. So, this is technical front. So, this is technical back, this is technical front, then this is technical back. If you go below, technical back, technical back. If you go here, technical back, this one, technical front, then this one, technical back. So, naturally, this fabric is having technical back and front on the same surface. So, this is definitely cannot be created on a single bed machine. So, because of that we need two bed arrangement for representing this fabric. So, how do we represent needles for two bed? So, for representing needles for two beds, you have front bed needles and then you have back bed needles. So, the below set of needles is showing front bed and upper set of the needles showing back bed. So, this is how we represented the gating for double bed in case of reef fabrics. Okay. So, naturally this fabric must be having two sets of needles. So, now let us count how many needles has been used on each of these beds. So, uh, first let us see how many courses are there. So, this is the courses number which is shown here. So, in the first course you can see all our technical back side and which bed make technical back side. So, the upper set of the needles. So, these two needles are making technical back side. So, because here there is two loops and all are technical back side. Now, if you go for the second course again this loop is technical back side and the next loop is also technical back side. So, again these two needles uh, and the old loop is just below this. So, again same two needles from the back bed has to be used. Now, if you go for the third course, the black one is technical back side, the old loop is just below this, the leftmost loop, this loop is also technical back side. Okay? But now you see there is a new loop has been created. We need to understand how these new loops has come, which bed is responsible. So, if you carefully see the leg, so leg is coming out. So, naturally in the third course, one of the needle from front bed has to be engaged because the nature of loop is on the front side. So, till two course only back bed was operating, but in the third course because of this loop which is technical front in the nature. So, one of the needle from, from front bed has to be used. So, now from the third course there is three needles is participating and one needle is from technical front side. Now, let us uh, go for the fourth course. This loop is technical back. Again if you see this loop four intermeshing points, but technical front and the third loop this is technical back. So, two technical back, one technical front. So, two needles from the back bed, one needle from the front bed. In the fifth course also, two needles from the back bed, one needle from the front course. So, five courses is there and in the first course, two needles from the back bed, second course, two needles from the back bed and next three courses, we are having one needles from the front bed taking part. So, first let us create five set of front and back bed needles. So, we can have as many needles depending on uh, the number of columns. Uh, since here we have just two needles from the back bed, for, but for the simplicity to representing the back and front beds, I am representing more number of needles towards the front bed and back bed side. But while making the loops, I will be using only few needles from each of these beds. Now, let us go for the third course.
Now let's go for fourth course. Now let's go for fifth course. And the placement of back and front bed because the needles are not facing each other. So that's why they are replaced or they are displaced laterally by half pitch. So you can see this needle and this needle, they are not in the same vertical straight line. So the back bed is actually sifted from the front bed by half pitch distance. This is you represented the five cores of front bed and back bed. Now we start representing this particular needle. So I can pick any two needles uh, of the front bed or back bed. So let's I'm picking two needles of the back bed somewhere here. We can also pick here, but uh, it depends on um, uh, the users. So you either you can start from the left or you can start from the right or you can start anywhere in the between. So the first course, two loops from the back bed because these two loops are on the back side. So any two needles, so let us make two loops on the back side. So this is the two loops on the back side. So two needles from the back bed. So back bed, in case of V bed, we know front and back notations. If you have cylinder and dial, so the front bed is actually represented by cylinder and the back bed is represented by dial. So in case of double bed circular machines. Now if you go for the second course, again these two loops, if you see these two loops are again being formed on the same bed, which is the back bed because they are technical back side. So this needle is again creating this loop. So okay, and this needle which created this loop and now creating this loop. So two needles. Now let us see the third course. Again, if you see this loop, this is technical back side and the left loop in the third course, this is again technical back side. So this and this. So again two needles, they created two technical back loops. But when these two back loops are not connected, so we cannot connect these, rather in between two loops there is one front loops is coming because now one of the needle, especially this needle uh, is now participating. So you can see the yarn, yarn is now going in the front bed because the nature of the leg which is moving, the loop is moving on the front side of the old loop. So this is the old loop. So you can see the nature of leg is towards the front. On the front side leg is visible. So this is visible on the front side. So that's why this particular loop has to be created using front bed. So one of the needle has to be used. Now the question here is, if you carefully see this particular loop, two intermissing points is missing but the loop at the this particular loop, there is no old loop on the front bed. So two of the intermissing points for this particular front loop is missing because there is no old loop at the bottom on this particular needle. So naturally, if you try to go by the definitions, it has only two intermissing points and this is the first loop which we created on the front bit. Whenever the needle is pulling the yarn first time, it will only create the needle segment. It will not create the other two intermissing points there because there is no old loop. So this loop is missing. So because of that, there is only two intermissing points. So although if you follow the yarn movement, it looks like tuck, but since it is the first course or first loop on the front needle, two interfacing points are missing. So this is not a tuck as per the definitions because there is two, no old loop is holding on the needle. So this is just, there is one head. So because of that, this is again a loop and this is semi loop because two intermissing points of the loop is missing. So if you go lecture number two in week one, I have uh, given you some indication of in some of the loop, there could be four intermissing points especially on the last course loop and the first course loop. 
we will always have two intermissing points missing in those loops. So, so this is the first course loop. So, that is why two intermissing points are missing, but it is still a front loop. So, this is a front loop. So, to represent front loops, if you can see this is the representation of front loop and these front loops are connecting these two back loops. So, we can simply connect like this. Okay. So, we can simply connect like this. So, two back bed, one front bed. Now, in the fourth course and fifth course, if you carefully see this is technical back, technical front, technical back, then technical back, front, back. So, these two are similar. So, this needle will now again make technical back, this needle will also make technical back, this needle will again make technical front and this needle will connect these two needles. So, front bed and back bed loops are connected. This is the normal rib notation. Uh, in the fifth course also, it looks like same. So, this is the fabric notation for a double jersey fabrics. If you go by the box notation, box notation uh, become even very simple. So, in the box notations, you can have three columns because three needles has been used. So, if you see here, there are three needles has been used and there are five courses. So, if you see this one is the back bed, then this is front bed, then back bed and this is first, second, third, fourth and fifth. Okay. So, in the first course, only technical back is being formed front is not making anything. So, you can say, so uh, eventually the front is actually making the float. If you carefully see, this indicates uh, that this needle is not catching the yarn. So, it looks like a float. So, that is why we will leave this box blank because needle is not uh, intermeshing the loops. So, if you see the float, it is represented by blank box. For the front needle, we will keep it blank because this is not participating. In the second course also, similar two back bed needles are participating, front needle is not participating. So, the yarn is present in the straight form in the back side of the front needle. In the third course also, back needle are making back loops, but this one is now making front loop. So, this one, so this one is now front loop. In the fourth, again, these needles will be making technical back loops this will be making technical front then 0. So, this is how you represent the box notation, this is point notation. So, again you have to be extremely careful in understanding the yarn path because that will decide the diagram. If you do not look at this, this diagram looks simple uh, because it is just you can understand these two needles are operating back then this needle is making technical front. So, but in reality when the fabric will be formed, it will have very complicated nature of yarn path inside the structure. So, this is how um, we represent this particular structures. Um, if you carefully see the moment uh, I am engaging one front needles, these two loops are now opening up. So, because of that there will be hole will be created inside the fabric structures. So, this is how you will get the lace type of visibility on the fabric surface because there will be a definitely a bigger holes you can which can be visible in the fabric surface when you will watch it closely. So, this is how we uh, represent this particular fabric. Now, let us go for even more complicated diagram. I believe this is one of the most complicated diagram. If you understand this, then I believe that in future you will be able to represent any sort of fabric structure which belongs to weft knitting. Now, let us see again this particular diagram. So, uh, now I am going to follow only one notation because uh, having representing two notation is taking time. So, now, now let us focus only one notation. So, first let us count how many courses you can see. This is the black one is the first course. Then this is the white one, you, if you carefully see, this is the white one. So, this is second course, then this is third course, you can see the free ends of the yarn. 
then this is the fourth you can see here then fifth the black one then sixth then white one which is here the bigger held loops then this is the seventh then this is eight this is nine okay so nine free ends you can easily see how many columns you can see one column two column three column four columns so four columns nine courses so let's go for box diagram so you can make a table of four columns and nine courses one two three four five six seven eight and nine so one two three four five six seven eight nine now you have to also identify whether this fabric belongs to single jersey or double jersey to find out whether a particular fabric is single jersey or double jersey you have to see whether you can have any technical front as well as take technical back loops on the surface so you have to identify technical front and back loops so if you see this black one this is technical front because the legs are on the front side now if you see this bigger held loop carefully the legs are going behind so you can see the leg side uh, if you see this particular loop it is going behind okay so naturally this is technical back side so this column the needles are operating on the technical back side this column technical front side again if you go for this one this needle again technical front if you see all the loops in this column technical front again if you go for this particular column it is again on the back side okay this is back bed needles so first column is front needles so f represent front bed b represent back bed front bed back bed so the idea here is like this so front bed and back bed so these are the needles so two front needles and two back needles so this is how the fabric has been created especially this fabric now let's denote the loops for each courses so if you go for the first course the black one is technical front side so you can make simply cross now if you see this straight segments this is not towards the head part rather it is there on the leg part so this is in a straight conditions and it is not engaging with the old loop because if you carefully see so naturally this particular loop is a float stitch because it is in straight part and it is visible towards the if you see this one also towards the leg side okay it is not towards the head so the needle is not catching this yarn so when the needle is not catching this this yarn naturally it will be in a float condition so in that case we will keep this box blank then if you go for the uh, this third loop of the first course this is technical front cross and then if you go for the back bed needles especially this one here now the yarn is towards the head side and if you carefully observe the needle movement especially at this point it is catching two yarns so one is this white yarn and this black yarn so basically it is holding two yarns loop so this is naturally a kind of tuck okay so cross float so here you can see this is straight part it is not engaging with the head but here it is with the head so one is tuck one is float so float tuck now if you go for the second one second one if you carefully see this movement this is technical front so after that if you go for the back side if you see this yarn is still moving and making a bigger held loop so this is the bigger held loop which runs for multiple courses so if you remember whenever we make float or tuck it is always associated with held loop so this is also a kind of held loop and this particular loop is made by the back bed needles especially this needle on the back side so this will be a zero now after that 
after making head loop it is again making front loops if you see this one this is making front loop cross after making this loop if you go for the fourth column it is again making technical back loops zero okay so carefully see technical front then this is technical back then this is technical front then this is technical back okay now go for the third course third course if you carefully see this is technical front cross now if you go here if you see this this particular legs part is now engaging with the head and this particular needle is having three or four yarn segments present in the same needles so in one of the lecture also i have shown you like how the same needle can have multiple tucks in the consecutive courses so here this particular needle is actually making three tucks so which you can see uh, it is holding this held loop also it is holding the yarn from third course it is also holding the yarn from fourth course and it is also holding the yarn from back course so this particular needle is actually taking three courses at a time for consecutively three courses okay so this is a tuck because it is going towards the head side so dot after that you are making technical front and after that this is straight yarn so this is a float part this is float because this is a straight part if you go for the fourth course again this is technical front fourth course and then you can see this is again a tuck so dot then again if you see this cross technical front and again this is float now if you go for the fifth course this is fifth one the black one technical front now you can see again this is the bend part which is there with uh, the needle so the ne needle is catching the yarn without releasing the old loops so this is again a tuck dot then this again black part technical front and then this is a straight part because the needle is not catching here so this is a straight segment so this is blank now if you go for the sixth column this is technical front after making technical front it is making bigger held loop which is technical back side zero then if you see this one technical front now if you see this one technical back if you go for seventh again the first column cross now after that this part is blank because this is float then this is technical front now this one if you see it is going and catch by the needles without releasing the old loop so this is a tuck so in the seventh course tuck if you see eighth again technical front this is technical front then this is straight segment blank box then again technical front and then this part is catch by the needle without releasing the below loop so this is tuck now ninth again technical front then this is again the straight part not catch by the needle so blank then again technical front and now it is catch by the needle without releasing the whole loop so this is tuck so it is just if you see uh, this is the repeat design so three consecutive tuck then three consecutive float um, similarly here when the first needle from the back bed is making tuck loop then next consecutive needle of back bed is making float here three float that needle is making the next consecutive needle of the back bed is making tuck so this is a kind of repeat design so if you keep following it you will get a very beautiful surface of the fabric which has different uh, aesthetics although the fabric looks extremely complicated but on the diagram it is much easy to understand so i expect you to do the practice of even more complicated structure just to um, get confidence in this particular diagram notation the last uh, fabric which i want to do it in this particular lecture also is what happened when you have two different colors of yarn present in the 
same course. So this is usually uh, used in jacquard type of knit fabrics. So in jacquard fabrics actually in the same course, some needles will be catching yarn number A, in some needles it will be catching yarn number B. Uh, in one of the lectures I have given you demonstration on interlock machines where even feeder was catched by the cylinder long butt needles and odd feeders was catched by the cylinder short butt needles. So you can assume that within the same bed some needles will be catching one type of yarn and other set of the needles can catch different set of yarn. So it might be possible that within the same course there could be two feeds and some needles um, will be catching one feed and other set of the needles of the same bed can be catching two feeds. So in that case the representations can be different. So uh, I am giving you one of the uh, simple structure in a jacquard knit design where in every course there are two colors of yarns are catched by separate set of needles from the same bed. So first let us see whether this is a uh, single jersey fabric or double jersey fabric. If you see this one, this is technical front loops, if you see second columns again technical front, if you see third column technical front. So if you see the nature of the loops, any loops in a particular columns, they all are technical front. So this is a single jersey fabrics. But how it is different, um, if you carefully see the color and follow the path of white yarn and black yarn carefully in every course, you will realize there are two feeds going on same bed. <coughs> Let us see the from the left side. So if you see this one, the black one, so the black one is moving in this fashion. So it is not making anything in the first column. So the first needle is not doing anything with the black yarn. Then it is making loop on the second column, then third column, fourth column, fifth column, sixth column and again seventh needle is not doing anything with the black yarn. If you see the white, if you see follow the movement of white yarn, the first needle is making loop, then it is the next five needles is not doing anything and then seventh needle is making loops. Okay. So in the same course when black loops are being formed other needles are not doing anything and when white yarns are cached by the needles other set of the needles are not doing anything. So it clearly means that on the same bed some of the needles are allotted one type of yarn and some other needles are allotted other type of yarn. We have such technologies, jacquard machines uh, which I will be covering later in this course where you can individually select and give uh, yarn to each individual needles. You can every time you can change the yarn feed and you can select uh, individually each needles of the bed. So that is even more complicated technologies but let us first uh, focus on the fabric notation of this particular fabric. So naturally there are seven columns, it is a single jersey fabric. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So first course. So in the first course also you have seen one time only black yarn has been doing a one thing. In the second feed only white yarn are doing knitting. So in the second course, this is basically again the first course only but the selection of the needle is different. So again, so you have to in the first course, you have to sew two feeds, feed 1 which indicates the yarn color and this is for feed 2 which again indicates yarn color. So this is the notations we have to follow. Let us make the diagram for first feed. So first feeds, let us define this black one is the first feed in the first course and white one is the feed number 2. So now we follow the black path of the yarn in the first course. So if you carefully follow the black yarn, it is the straight segment on the front side. So on the front side, if you see, so this is the float. So this particular needle is actually making float at this location the black yarn 
after that there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 consecutive loops. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and if you see the last needle it is just making float. So, 5 consecutive loops, 2 floats on either side. So, this is the path of black yarn. So, if you see the follow the black yarn, this is float, then 5 loops and then again float. So, this is feed number 1, when, where you have feed the black yarns only to 5 needles, you are not feeding black yarns. So, these 2 particular needles. So, these 2 particular needles are resting when 5 needles are operating consecutively. Now, in the next feed, this is again the same course because the yarn is being present on the same course. If you follow the yarn path, so the first needle is now making loop, then if you follow the yarn path, it is becoming straight for next 5 columns. So, it is actually making float, then again making loop. So, now these 2 needles which was resting here in the first feed is now operating in the second feed when white yarn are feed. So, we are actually making white loop in the second feed in the first course and next 5 needles which were making loops with the black yarn is not doing anything with the white yarn. So, that is why this is float. Okay. So, black yarns are operating 5 needles, the other needles are not working. When other needles are working, then these 5 needles are not working. So, alternate is, it is basically selection of long butt needles and short butt needles alternatively. This is for the first course. We can move to the second course as well. So, so again in second course, 6 needles we require 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 columns and for 2 feeds. So, this is again course number 2 and we can again represent the black feed and so 2 indicates black color and 2 dash indicates white color, white yarn. Okay. So, now if you follow the black yarn, 4 loops and then 3 floats. So, 4 loops and then 3 floats. So, 4 loops, 4 needles are operating, these 3 needles are not catching the black yarn. When the white yarn was feed, so the 4 needles are not catching the white yarn and 3 needles are catching the yarn, yarn and making front loops. So, these 4 needles are not catching the white yarn and next 3 needles are catching the white yarn. So, again if you carefully see these 4 needles are operating, other 3 needles are resting. When other 3 needles are operating, other 4 needles are resting. So, this is how you create a jacquard fabrics and you can play with the color. So, sometimes at some section one particular yarn will be visible, on the other side other color of the yarns will be visible. So, this is very very useful when you make jacquard design and you can decide the colors on the fabric surface depending on the float and the loop. Uh, so, on some side you can make sure the loop is visible, on the other side you can make sure the float is visible. So, this is how you play and hide yarns with these type of designs. Although so far in previous lectures we have not covered any machines which is capable to make this type of complicated structure. So, this particular type of structures are actually being formed on a machines which has the capability to control or select each individual needles on the bed. So, in subsequent lectures, I will be covering one of such complicated advanced technologies where you can select any needles at any position on the same bed and you can decide whether it should make float, yarn or loop. So, again you can see here multiple feeds, any time any particular needles can be given any color of yarn. So, such type of flexibilities is there in weft knitting and you can go for any 
complicated design. So, just now we have done with this. So, if you also follow this particular path of each feeders and each needles, you would be able to make the notation for these type of fabrics. So, we finished fabric notation in this particular lecture. Now, from the next week, I am going to introduce you different fabric designs which I will be creating on single bed and V bed machines which I have covered already in the previous weeks. So, with these designs, I am also going to help you to analyze these structures, how when you create different tuck, float and other stitches in the fabric, how the fabric properties will change. So, that is also very important from engineering point of view or from design point of view. You should not only focus on the design aspects of the fabric, but also you should be able to know how the fabric behaves when you play with different stitches. So, stay tuned. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.